Good morning. Today is the 10th day of the first Adar, the 19th of February. We are up to the second reading of Parsha Tetzaveh. One of the uh, great innovations of the Baal Shem Tov was something we've talked about many times, that the word mitzvah, a commandment, can be understood as deriving from the word tzavta. And tzavta means to be together. It sounds a little bit like the German zusammen, so they like that to say that in Yiddish and in German, zusammen, mitzvah. So a mitzvah is meant to bring things together. What is it meant to bring together? First of all, God and man. That's the first thing. But, as we see in this week's Parsha, which is called Tetzave, there is another Parsha called Tzav, you shall command. But here it's almost like the word Tetzave is almost like mitzvah. And basically everything is coming together. This whole Parsha is about bringing things together. So even though we talked a lot about the different constituent parts of the tabernacle and the clothing of the high priest. When Moses, like we spoke yesterday, is commanded to command them to bring the clear olive oil. And we explained that that that's connecting everybody who has a Torah innovation back to the Moses of the generation, so that all the Torah is connected into a single eternal flame. The same thing is also true about the Jewish people in and of themselves they also need to be connected. And where are they connected? What connects them together? So in today's reading, which focuses almost entirely on the high priest's breastplate, we see this place where they come together. And how does it work? The breastplate is basically a plate of gold upon which <coughs> upon which there are stones representing the different tribes placed like you place stones in a there's a word for it I don't know exactly what it is in English but it's le shabitz it's called in Hebrew it's to place the stone in the right spot and this in and of itself to put something in its right place is an art form, in and of itself. It's well known, there's a parable from Reb Nachman of Breslev that there was a great artisan who was commissioned by a king to make him a new crown. And he designed this crown and all of the precious stones in it and everything was ready. Everything had been put in place except for one particular stone that was the most precious of all. And the artisan had tried time and time again to place it, as jewelers do, in in the exact right spot. And he failed. He couldn't do it. His hand shook. He knew the importance of what he was doing. And so he was unable to calm himself down enough to be able to actually do it. He was so self-conscious that it stopped him from doing the simple act that any person could do. And the king calls him and says, I commissioned you to make a crown for me two years ago. Where is it? Why is it not finished? And he was embarrassed to say that there's one more stone that I can't I can't bring myself to put it in place because it means so much. The stone is so precious. The entire crown will be ruined if I don't do it exactly right. And it freezes me every time. He was was embarrassed to say that, so he didn't say it. So he said he's working on the final, final touches. He'll have it ready in three days. Okay, so the king agreed. He went back home and he's thinking, what am I going to do? I have three days, but I've tried for a year to set the stone. I think it's called setting the stone. And haven't been able to. And then he hits upon an idea. He calls his next door neighbor who's a farmer. Who's a goat farmer. And he calls him in and he says, look, 
I need you to help me with something. I can't do it with two hands. I need four hands to do this. So I'm going to hold the crown in exactly this position and you will take the stone and set it inside. So the farmer is surprised. What, what do you mean? You want me to set a stone in the king's uh, crown? He says, yeah, yeah, anybody can do it. It's not a problem at all. It's just that I want to hold it in a particular way and I can't do it at the same time. You, you'll, you'll be fine. Don't worry about it. So what does he know from anything? He takes the stone and he sets it in place. It takes him exactly 10 seconds. He's finished. And it's over. The same thing happens with placing the stones in the breastplate. There's so much that depends on this. What depends on it? For First of all, the connection between the tribes. That all the tribes are carried on the high priest's breast, on his chest. And they're always close to his heart. But it's much more than that, as we'll see in a moment. But let's uh, just take that image uh, apart for a moment. What, what does it mean? In the time of the tabernacle, in the time of Moses, even during the time of the first temple, there were tribes. There were tribes. To have them set together on the high priest's chest, in the breastplate, was a symbolic act of bringing them together, of creating unity, of saying, you all have a very particular place and you're all connected to one another, you're all connected to the high priest, you all go in with him when he goes into the Holy of Holies. But as we said, not only that, but when there's a question, and if you watch the uh, uh, class that I gave in Los Angeles um, on January 9th, 9th in the evening, that class was all about that, about where the original knowledge of the oral tradition came from, not the uh, guidelines given to Moses at Sinai, but rather the particular cases that were asked and became part of the corpus that we know as the Mishnah or the Brita. The Talmud is based on this. Where did this all come from? It came from the high priest being given a case, asking the question, and then seeing the answer highlighted in the particular letters on the breastplate, on the engraved letters on the breastplate. And the letters had to be seen from all the names of all the tribes, because without all the tribes, you don't have all the letters of the Hebrew alphabet. So they're all needed to communicate with God. You're all needed. You're all part of this. That's what the breastplate signifies. The coming together, the tzuzamin, the togetherness. So that was needed 3,000 years ago. It was needed up to 2,500 years ago. What about now? <laughs> Let's say we had the breastplate, and we read about it every year, so we have it in a sense. What is it meant to give us? So the answer is that in every generation you have to think about these things again. The breastplate is still the breastplate. You still have to make it the same way. It still has to be carried by the high priest on his chest. It still has to be secured to the aphod in a certain way. It, it, it sits in a certain way. It is something in particular. It's made of certain stones. But all this is for a different purpose today. It's not just for telling the Jews you're all one. It's actually to help people find their place in the world. What do we mean by that? There's a very important verse in Proverbs that says, One who hates his son refrains from rebuking him. The, but the word rebuke, shivto, also means, re, also means tribe, his tribe. And so the meaning today is that if you don't look at your son, you don't look at your, those under you, those who are dependent on you, and you don't ask yourself the question, what tribe are they from? Not in the sense of, are they from Reuben or Shimon or, 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 or Yehuda? We don't know, and that's not the point. The point is that there are different characteristics to different people. Today, to love someone is not just to care for them in the sense of providing them with sustenance, providing with them with what they need. To care for someone means to take interest in them, 
to know their place, to see their place, to help them set themselves in the right place. The person does it to himself without even thinking. He's like the farmer, like the goat farmer. But the educator, the one who's responsible, the parent, the one who cares, that person is like setting a stone in the king's crown. That's the way we need to see it. We need to see it as our greatest responsibility towards people, to help them figure out who they are, to help them find their way in life, not to feel detached, not to feel like they're a stone that doesn't have a setting, that doesn't have a place. Because every person needs to feel that they are part of this breastplate, they are a part of this thing that the high priest is carrying around with him on his chest. But more importantly, that God cannot express himself, he cannot communicate what he wants in the world without every person being in their correct place. To that end, we always talk about the senses, the 12 senses. And what we mean by senses is that every person has talents, different talents that need to be analyzed, need to be uncovered, need to be seen by others, set in the breastplate. That's what it means to carry them around on our heart. And that's what it means that God needs everybody in their rightful place. So well, this will end today, and I invite you to look at the Patreon, which thankfully already has yesterday's article, and God willing, we'll have today's article also, and hopefully everything else will be fixed too. Thanks for joining today. Hope to see you tomorrow.